want to thank all of you for joining us. Um, I ask that you mute your mic if you haven't done so already. Um, and if you have a question throughout the presentation, please send it in the chat. As well, at the end of the presentation, we will have an opportunity for questions and comments. Um, I also ask that you please, in the chat, if you feel comfortable doing so, you put your name and what school you're from. We are very excited to have our KPDSB students here tonight from grade eight to 12 joining us to talk about what is mental health and how we all have mental health, how we all have good days and bad days, and how we are all here to support one another. Um, I'm very excited to have two individuals from Jack.org joining us here tonight that I will introduce in a few minutes. Um, and we are very excited to have them here to discuss with us um, what their organization does and then also what we can do and tools we can learn on how to support our friends and family and ourselves during this time and our own mental health. Um, I would first like to introduce Marissa Melanson. She's in the middle of the screen waving. Um, she is our student counselor from Red Lake for our elementary schools, and she will be also joining us here um, this evening. So I'm going to put a slide up and quickly go over um, some of the concepts and material that we will cover tonight during our Google Meet. So you guys should be able to see that on the screen. If you can't, please let me know. Um, as well, if you have a few minutes to just in the chat, write your name and what school you're from, that would be great. We appreciate to see um, that information. So first, I would like to introduce Jess Ford. She is our KPDSB program coordinator um, for the Northern and Central Ontario. So she supports all our KPDSB schools. So in Sioux Lookout, Ignis, Dryden, Kenora, and Red Lake. Um, and she supports our Jack chapters um, within our schools. And I know some of our schools have Jack chapters. In the past, we've been able to actually attend one of the Jack summits, some of our students in Winnipeg, which was an awesome experience. And I know some of our schools up here have also um, received Jack talks, which I think we'll get into a little bit later on tonight. What is a Jack talk? Um, so some of you may have seen the Jack talks in the past. Um, and also, I know these guys are going to touch on that later tonight. So lots of great opportunities through Jack.org. And it's really exciting that we have Jess on the call tonight to talk about what she does to support our schools up here in Northwestern Ontario. I am also really excited to have Sadia on our call tonight. She is an Ontario network rep and also a speaker. And some of you guys may have recognized her from some of the um, recent virtual Jack Talks. I know our board um, shared the virtual talks during Mental Health Week. So I'm super excited to hear from Sadia and um, learn about what she gets to do with the organization. I also asked Jess if we could touch on the Be There resource from Jack.org, as I find it's a great resource for students on how to support their friends and family um, who may be struggling. As well, later on, I'm going to touch on how we have many great resources up here in Northwestern Ontario and many great supports um, to support our students and individuals up here. And then at the end, we're gonna open the floor up to questions if anyone has any questions. Um, and really excited to connect as this is our first ever KPDSB Jack.org meetup. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, I ask that if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and then we will at the end um, open the floor up to an open conversation. Thanks Jess, take it away. Hi everyone, um, am I muted? No, okay. <laughs> Sadia knows I'm pretty awful with the technologies. So um, yeah, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Um, so hi everyone, thank you for having me to this awesome little gathering party. As Jace can see, I, I love to dance, I love to groove, I love to uh, connect with new friends. So I'm really um, honored to have this space together. So as Stephanie was saying, I am the Northern and Central Coordinator for um, Ontario. I just started with Jack.org in January, January 6th, so I'm a little bit still new. Um, I'm based in Toronto. Um, I guess kind of my, my background is I 
did a Master's of Indigenous Governance in the University of Winnipeg, and I've worked with a lot of Indigenous communities in Australia and Canada. Um, I really love spending time in northern, more remote, small town spaces. I feel like the, the community bonds are uh, really beautiful and strong there. Um, but currently, I'm based in Toronto. And um, yeah, we're, we it's sunny out here, but definitely not as as warm and sunny as you all have it. So, um, but yes, thank you. I'm gonna put in my email in the chat and also my Jack.org Facebook. So yeah, if anyone wants to chat and connect afterwards, um, love to stay connected. And I'll shoot the mic over to the wonderful Sadia. I couldn't find the button. Hi everyone, um, my name is Sadia. I am, I am based in Vaughan, Ontario. So just a little bit outside of Toronto. I have been with Jack.org for three, I'm about to approach the third year, the third year mark, I think next month. Um, I'm a Jack Talk speaker, I'm a chapter lead, I'm a network rep, I've been involved in basically all of their programming. It's been a while. Um, and my mental health advocacy is rooted in education and advocating for everybody to have the right to talk about their own mental health. and. Um, have access to oh my god culturally appropriate mental health resources i forgot what i stood for for a second um i am very much so grateful to be able to he to be able to be here and connect with all of you and hear more about your experiences because i'm always trying to learn more about different parts of ontario and how i can support other students in this in this province so thank you Awesome. Thank you, both of you, for introducing yourself. Jess, I thought maybe we could talk a little bit, like, what is a Jack chapter and kind of how we have chapters up here um, in our boards? Sorry, that's, uh, it just froze up for one second. What did you say? That's okay. Um, I was just wondering if we could just quickly, like, explain to everyone what is a Jack chapter, mm -hmm. how we have them within our school boards up here. Um, in Northwestern Ontario for the KPDSC and kind of some of the work you do with the chapters and kind of the events that we get to plan at the schools. Mm -hmm. So we have about um, 25 chapters in Central and Northern Ontario. And we're all, always looking to expand and build more. Actually, we're also doing community chapters as well. So if anyone's interested in that, Sadia actually organized the first community chapter in uh, Woodbridge and we're doing the second one ever in Manitoulin. So kind of keep that on your radar. But uh, pretty much the chapters are kind of like mental health clubs. And I kind of explain it as a living organism. So the way in which the chapter looks in Vaughan uh, compared to Ignace, compared to Red Lake, compared to Kelowna is completely different because it's really um, based on the peoples, the community, the region, the strengths, the challenges, the barriers. So pretty much I'm sure a lot of you, you all know that Jack.org is uh, Canada's only youth-led mental health charity that really promotes mental health advocacy, education, and awareness. Uh, we really like to promote different activities and initiatives that, um, you know, break the, smash the stigma around mental health. We're not a peer-to-peer -peer counseling service. That's one thing that we're always really mindful of and considerate of because we are not um, a service agency. But we're, what we're aiming to do is to support all peoples that have a greater understanding of mental health and self-care and how to be there for yourself and be there for others. Um, some of the different I, campaigns and initiatives that are going on right now, like I'm sure a lot of you know, um, a lot of you folks have done activities with say uh, therapy dogs or the Smash the Stigma events with the pumpkins in the fall or um, the stress kids at exams or um and again we're we're moving into a different sort of virtual digital space right now and oh i do also welcome everyone to we're doing tune in tuesdays every week so all of the folks from central and, and northern ontario come together over zoom and it's a great opportunity to meet other folks in your region and share different initiatives and ideas 
the Laurentian, the Lakehead crew right now is partnering with the Thunder Bay Friendship Center and working on medicine wheel kits that are then going to be um, uh, delivered to different youth that usually frequent the center. So there's so many ideas The the world is your oyster. Is that the saying? Any idea that comes to mind, um, we can grow and um, create magic with. So that's great, Jess. Thank you. And I know like working with our chapter closely here in Red Lake, um, it's awesome to hear the youth voices and hearing their ideas and their creativity and the ideas they come up with to spread the message about how we all have mental health, five and five of us, and how can we be creative to reach um, our students within our school and really just open that conversation about mental health. And I think a lot of times that conversation can be hard. So finding creative um, events to really connect with other students and youth um, are awesome, is an awesome way to really spread the message. I know in Red Lake, we've done the Smash the Stigma event, and that was a lot of fun, smashing pumpkins. We've also handed out smile cookies to all the students in our school. Um, we've handed out hot chocolate, um, I think candy grams. I don't know if anyone else on the video call wants to jump in and add any other ideas that we've done. Um, but just all the students I know in Red Lake in our chapter have been very creative. And I know other chapters in our area too. I know in Sioux Lookout, they've planned some really cool events at their high school. And they have an awesome Instagram page too um, that shares messaging about Mm -hmm. um, what is mental health and local resources up here? And I know also our school board, the student counselor um, group just created a new Instagram and Facebook page too. And it's called um, the KPDSB underscore schools underscore mental underscore health. And we've been sharing daily videos and tips um, that students and families can try to um, spread the message about how can we support positive mental health. Um, and I would be, um, I want to share this message with all the students on the call too. If you would like to be in one of the videos too, um, please reach out to me and maybe we could set up a time where you could share a message with our um, KPDSB community. And if that's something you're interested, let me know. I've been doing TikTok Thursdays. I'm not a good dancer at all, but I've been trying to get, bust out my dance moves and <laughs> make some fun TikToks. And Marissa, who's on the call, she's been doing um mental health or no minute yep mental health minute. mental health minute on mondays and been sharing some awesome ideas too um so if anybody wants to be in one of the videos that's on this call let me know we can find a creative way to still share the message about mental health and be creative around how can we reach people and support people during this time too so i just have a quick question um for you, Sadia, I was wondering if you could share a little bit of your experiences with the Jack Talks. I know we've had a couple of talks within our schools and we've really enjoyed them. And it's been awesome having the speakers come up to our communities. And I was just wondering if you could touch um, a little bit on the talks and then also maybe on the virtual talk too, um, because I've been sharing that with a lot of students and it's an awesome um, presentation and I really enjoyed watching it. So I was just wondering if you could touch base on that quickly. Yeah, the talks program is probably one of the coolest things I have ever done in my life. Um, it just gives me the opportunity. I've gone all over Ontario. I've been from like the north, the most northern part of Ontario. Maybe it's not the most northern part, but I was in a little town called Marathon, Ontario. That was nuts to me just to like, I didn't even know it existed. And this program has given me the opportunity to learn more about parts of Ontario that I've never thought I'd even be able to experience. Um, so which was super cool for me and it's really nice to be able to go and from not really knowing much and the coordinators at jack.org are amazing they will train you it's like a month-long training process and they teach you everything you need to know in order to safely and effectively relay mental health 101 to anybody and this talk is a really nice opportunity for you to go and just get to know more students in your area and just learn about what they need in order to succeed better with their mental health. So I've had students come up to me and I've had students say that, oh my gosh, your story is exactly like mine, which is a little wild to think because I always thought that I was alone in my mental health struggle. And uh, the virtual talk. So 
the virtual talk was so weird to be able to, usually I do this talk in front of thousands of students. So to do it in front of nobody was super weird, but it is a really, really amazing, amazing platform that gives you everything you need in sections. So if you want to learn about how to be there for yourself or how to be there for others, or if you're just simply, if you maybe have a gap in knowledge about what mental health 101 even is, it offers that knowledge for you. You can look at it in, in, in little parts, take it day by day because mental health is a lot. Learning about mental health is a lot, especially when you don't have the knowledge to start with. I know I went through that when I first started training with Jack.org. So take it day by day and that's why the parts are so great. And you can do quizzes, there's dis discussion prompts if you're doing the classroom edition. Um, it is a really amazing platform. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. I know it must have been different, like not presenting in front of a group of people, but you did it's an so awesome weird. job. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. You did a great job. And you really caught my attention. So I hope that if you guys haven't watched the talk already, you have the opportunity to do so. And if you can't find Thank it, please you. let me know. Um, and I can share that with you too. So I just thought we could maybe touch base a for a few minutes on um, how can we be there for people in our life, maybe friends or family who may be struggling with their mental health. I know that this is a topic that has come up in many of my conversations lately with students, but how can we be there and how can we make sure that we know what to do to support a friend? It can be sometimes hard to talk about what's going on in someone's life and sometimes really difficult to have those hard conversations. And I know a lot, a lot of times youth are kind of sometimes scared to have those conversations, scared to know if they're saying the right thing, not saying the right thing, but they're still worried about their friend or their family member. Um, and with everything going on, I just thought maybe Jess, we could touch on what are some steps on how like we can be there for our friends and family right now? I might, um, lend the the mic over to Sadia to go over some of our five golden rules and maybe she'll share a little bit about our collaborations that um currently is happening with some some famous folks so how do you feel about that Sadia okay yeah no problem so be there is an online platform that equips youth with the knowledge they need in order to properly support somebody when they're struggling with their mental health so um, this could be the most simple example I use for high school students is let's say you're in class, you have your best friend, you guys hang out every Sunday, let's say they're an amazing student in school, always hand their assignments in on time, comes every day to school, and then all of a sudden it's very random, they stop coming to school, you notice they're not handing in their assignments anymore. They keep declining to hang out even outside of school. So maybe you notice, okay, something's going on. That's when you notice there's a bit of a struggle happening. When you do notice that there's a struggle happening, you go through the five rule process. So the first golden rule we have for be there is say what you see. So like I just said in the scenario, you could say something like, hey, blank, I noticed you're not coming to school anymore. Or I noticed you're not really hanging out anymore. Is there anything going on? Can we talk about it? Let's just have an open conversation here. And then that leads into step number two, which is show you care. And show you care means simply it's very with the word, with the rule, name of the rule. Um, and you're just saying, hey, I'm only bringing this up because of how much I care about you. You're my friend, you're my sibling, whatever it may be. Um, you're my friend and I really care about you and I just want to make sure you're doing, you're being 100, you're, you're doing 100% and I'm here to support you. And then that leaves, that goes to hear them out. So hear them out basically means you're sitting there, you're listening patiently. So listening patiently isn't, all in, isn't only with um, like repeating what they say, being like, okay, so this is what's happening. It can also be in your body language. So you're sitting there attentively, you're not looking in different places, or you can set that boundary in the beginning. For me, I'm a very fidgety person. So when I'm talking to my friends, I set that boundary and say, I'm not, it's not that I'm not listening to you. I just need to like look different. That's me. And then also number four is know your role. So at the end of the day, most people in our position, so students, people, young adults, we're not mental health professionals, we're not counselors, we're not psychologists, we are just friends, family, whatever it may be. We're just here to help and off give a helping hand. I'm so sorry, I'm so tired today. Offer a helping hand and just be a, a support for them. And then finally, this leans the last rule is connect them to help. 
So that's when you lead them to a professional, maybe someone like Kids Help Phone or a local counselor, your guidance counselor, your social worker at school, whatever it may be, you're leading them to a professional so they can help. And that's like the very basics of the five golden rules for Be There. And it just, and the whole website, be there.org, equips you with everything you need and it goes into the five rules in depth. And then there's videos for each rule. If you guys go to the first rule, you're going to see a video of me and my mommy. We, we, we made a fun video. And that's pretty much it, unless you have any questions about Be There. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for, like, going over the five golden rules. I find it's just, like, five simple steps that are really, like, easy to remember. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, sometimes when we're in a situation with, like, a friend or family member and we're worried about them, sometimes it's like, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do? So I think even, like, practicing or, like, reviewing those steps before you're in situations with friends and family members so when you're actually, like, in the situation with them, you kind of know what you could do to help support. And I think the a really big piece from the golden rules is I think sometimes we feel like we have to be the expert and like help the person out but just really knowing like just being there for them and like showing that you care so much and that you're there to support them and you're not judging them you're just going to listen and hear them out and then really being there as you support them um, to connect them to other services. Um, in a few minutes, I want to get into like what local services we have up here in Northwestern Ontario too, um, and how we can know how to appropriately connect our friends or family to those services. Um, I just wanted to highlight, I don't know if Saudi or Jess, you want to touch base on it, but I wanted to highlight um, the new resources on the jack.org website and how they're in partnership with um, Kids Help Phone and School, Ment School Mental Health Ontario. Um, and how those are some really great resources that I know I've been sharing with lots of students. I know Marissa has been, um, and there's lots of great tips um, in those resources. So I don't know if one of you guys don't mind um, touching on those resources quickly. Before we get into that, I just want to put yeah. like, two things about Be There like so quickly. Perfect. Um, I'm First of all, be there is not a linear process. So when you're being there for somebody, it does not have to be, oh my gosh, what did Sadia say? What is the third rule? I cannot remember. That's okay. Take it step by step and just that's why, like, like you said, review it on your own time before you put yourself in this type of situation because it is stressful. And then also, since you talked about partnerships, I just want to mention that um, Be There is in partnership with Lady Gaga's Born This Way Foundation. And it's a really really amazing opportunity for us to engage with the states as well and connect with youth everywhere. I just think that's really cool. I thought I'd share it. Jess, please talk about all the other partnerships. Thanks, Sadia. And I'm just going to quickly, Jess, before you speak, mm. I'm gonna thank you for adding that in, how like every situation um, that we may come across with a family or a friend who may be struggling with their mental health or just going through a hard time. Um, I think we all have good days and bad days and ups and downs in our lives. Um, and I think each situation is going to be unique and different. So knowing that it might not work out perfectly, those steps, and just kind of being open to that and just knowing that you're trying your best to support that person that you truly care about. So thank you. Jess, I'll let you touch on the online resources if that's okay. Yeah, definitely. And I know we keep on going, returning to the be there um, point, but just following and echoing what everyone's saying, it's um, if anyone feels like doing some extra homework in the next week, I welcome you all to have a little bit of a practice or a go with those five golden rules with maybe someone at home or maybe someone on the phone. I was lucky enough to see Sadia present um, at a school, thank you darling, um, at a school in Richmond Hill. And you offered us uh, that exercise where we turned to the friend sitting next to us and we did that exercise where the one person was um, the friend that was needing a bit of support. The other friend was the um, friend that was going to be there and have the act of listening. And yeah, because it does it does take time and practice. So um, and as Sadie said, it's not a linear process. So have a go with that. Um, I just I just threw in on the chat. So as Stephanie said, we've started a resource uh, hub on the Jack.org website. So. If you go there, there's heaps and heaps and heaps. And don't worry if it's a bit overwhelming. I know right now we're all being flooded with so many different resources and apps and self-care practices and different links here and there. And it can be really overwhelming. And some people kind of just like shut down to it all. Um, so 
I welcome you not to shut down, but to have a slow, slow little gander at the website. Um, anyone can kind of pop onto it now and take your time. There's different toolkits, um, different resources per regions, per provinces, territories. Um, yeah, just heaps and heaps of information there to to have a look at. So we also welcome if there's any feedback that you have, um, maybe we've missed something, there's a gap, there's an idea that you think might really work, please shoot us an email and let us know because we're constantly evolving and adapting. Uh, Jack.org is uh, the youth led and youth are the voice and core of our organization. So please share with us how you how you feel about the, the hub for sure. I think that's great, Jess. And I think too, like, how can we share these resources with our friends and family too? Is that on social media? Is that sending an email? Um, is that making a short video or a TikTok and finding a creative way to um, connect with our friends and share this information? Because I know sometimes like a link to a website can be overwhelming. So how do we really break down this information that we might read online? And how can we make sure that it's um, really been backed up with um, research and good statistics and um, we're making sure we're sharing relevant information that's evidence-based, right? We're sharing information that um, we know um, has worked and we make sure that we find creative ways to share it with our friends and our families. And even though a lot of us are at home right now and we're not going to school and we're not doing um, all our jack.org events in our communities right now, um, how can we still find creative ways to connect with our friends and our classmates? Um, and if anyone has anyone any ideas, please send me an email. I would love to hear them. Um, and I think it's great if we just get that message out there and we share these different uh, resources and information. So uh, I would like to um, encourage that. And if you need any support with that, please let me know. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about coping strategies and how can we support our own mental health during this time. And then I thought we could get into community resources and Marissa is going to touch on what are some of our community resources up here in Northwestern Ontario. Um, so I just wanted to take a minute and maybe both Jess and Saudia, the three of us, could talk a little bit about um, what are some coping strategies? What does coping strategies mean? I know to me, I almost like to think of coping strategies as a toolkit or a toolbox and how um, I like to find tools that work for me and my toolkit and how the tools that work for me and my toolkit might not work for you, Jess, or might not work for you, Sadia. So how do we take that time to find what tools and what coping strategies work for us in our lives and how we need to practice these coping strategies um, even during good times and high peaks in our life um, and not just when things aren't going well. So I know for me, some of my coping strategies, and I like to just talk and hear what other people's coping strategies and ideas are, just to get ideas, because some of my coping strategies I've used for years, and some are brand new to me. So I just want to kind of open the floor up to what are some coping strategies that you guys do? So if you want to throw some of those in the chat, that would be awesome. Um, and I'll share with you guys a couple of mine. So one for me is I love to run. I love to go for walks. I love getting outside. Um, I'm not a good dancer, but I am practicing, practicing through making TikTok videos. TikTok videos are a new coping strategy for me. I find them a lot of fun. I find them a place where I can be creative um, and listen to music. Um, and it's a really cool way to let out some stress. Another coping strategy, a new coping strategy for me is gardening. I've tried to make a little garden at my house and I have some herbs and I'm excited to try some new recipes and use those herbs to cook up a storm in my kitchen. I've made some homemade bread lately that's been delicious. So I just wanna hear Jess and Saudi, what are yours? And Marissa too, if you wanna jump on, I see everyone's ideas coming in and I love seeing them in the chat. <laughs> um, I'll go with then Sadia, do you wanna go? Okay. So. I also want to say that, you know, sometimes um, the things that we rely on um, are harder to access. You know, like I was really, I had a pretty strong routine with going to dance class, going to the gym, jogging, all things that re uh, release those endorphins, make me um, feel happier, make me feel stronger in my body. Uh, and I did keep on maintaining that practice when we went into isolation, but 
then that kind of faltered off and it's okay to ebb and flow you know it's okay to ebb and flow some days i'm a bit bummed out and eat potato chips and watch netflix other days i pick myself up go for go for a jog um pick up the phone, have a chat with someone, and it's okay, don't be hard on yourself. Always want to remember that, um, speak to yourself in the same way in which you would speak to your loved ones. And I, that's something I always have to practice as well, and speaking to myself with the love and kindness that I deserve and that we all deserve. But when I'm in my, when I'm in, when I'm in, in the zone, um, dance is definitely something that makes me feel so, 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 so good. Just yesterday, I biked down to the waterfront and my friend was there waiting for me with our speaker, playing some Sam Cooke, which a lot of you may not know. And we just had this beautiful dance party. Um, so ecstatic dance, free movement, that's something that really makes me feel so happy, so alive. Uh, connecting and relationship building, that is the most important driving force in my life. Um, I love having chats. Sadie and I will always just have little chats on the phone. I think we both really love it. I know she's probably going to talk about her dog. She was out walking her dog today, and I was out putting laundry in the in the machine. So, yeah, connect friends and and community are my uh, medicine. And of course, there's been some extra challenges. So I really try to be on Zoom as much as possible, on the phone, um, taking lots and lots of walks dancing and music. I've noticed that if I always keep my earbuds in um, when I'm doing work or even on calls and then I turn off the phone, goes right to Spotify, it helps me stay balanced. And I never realized that before, but kind of having that continuous music helps me stay focused and balanced and yeah, my emotions running well. So what about Sadia? Yeah, um, I, I find mine change quite frequently. Just depends on how I'm feeling the day. Um, as Jess mentioned, my dog, his name is Oreo. He's the love of my life. That's all I do is take care of him. Um, yeah, I'm between my dog and then just helping the family. And, and like, honestly, like, like Jess said, I find that, like, talking to people and helping other people helps me in a weird way. And just uh, knowing that I have something to do with my time is help super helpful. And then if I'm not doing stuff like that, it's listening to music or I just picked up Animal Crossing. And it's not an interest. Let me tell you, it's not. Okay, I, I don't have the, I don't have the Nintendo one. I have it on my iPad. It's not that much fun, but it's just so soothing to, like, pick fruit and to like do silly things like that. I know it's weird, Jess, I know. But basically, you just like pick up fruit and you bring fruit to other villagers and stuff like that. It's so soothing that it just takes up so much brain space that I'm not worried about anything else. So things like that, I like, that's, that goes, that's my coping strategy. That's awesome, thanks for sharing. I'm gonna get Marissa to share a couple of hers too, if that's okay. So I kind of wrote mine in the chat really quickly but i'll share too that um yoga is a really big one for me because i find um it's a really good blending of like physical movement with like some good spiritual and emotional um healing for me and then i also had a new quarantine love for me is baking um i watched the great canadian bake show on netflix and fell quickly in love and want to be a star baker so um I'm also somebody who uh, copes by eating sometimes. Yep, Dan Levy, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so eating my baking always works out well for me too. Um, and uh, just like everybody else, I like to have somebody to um, decompress with by talking. Um, my parents are, um, I should, well, I've heard that one's a good one, sugar rush one. Um, I like to decompress by talking to my parents. They don't always say the right things, but they're always supportive. So they give me lots of love and I appreciate being able to FaceTime and chat with them. So, yeah. Thanks, Marissa. Yeah, I think right now it's a little bit harder to stay connected with our friends and family members or classmates because we're not seeing them every day. 
Um, but I think that it's still so, so important to do that. And it can be difficult, but just really, really trying to stay connected if that's over FaceTime or Google Meet. Um, even just checking in on our friends. If we haven't heard from them in a while, just saying, hey, how are you doing? Wanted to see what's going on and just sending them a quick message because maybe they're going through something or maybe they're doing okay, but just checking in on our friends and family um, and really staying connected is important. So I think really drawing on our coping strategies and trying, trying to create a toolkit in our lives is really cool. And um, sometimes it takes time to find what those coping strategies are going to be. Um, but just taking time to try new things and finding what works for you. Um, at the high school in Red Lake, we have a wellness room. And it's really cool because there's a bunch of different activities. Um, this was one of our Jack chapter events was to create this wellness room. And we, we received some funding from jack.org to create the room. Um, so it's just a space, a room in our school. And it looks really, really comfy. It doesn't look like a classroom. There's a bunch of couches and pillows and calming lights. And we have a fish. I think the fish's name was Jack at one point <laughs> uh, after jack.org and lots of calming activities in the room. So there's card games, board games, um, coloring sheets, yoga mats, um, tons of different activities that students, if they just felt overwhelmed or just needed a few minutes, they could go into the wellness room and just take a few minute break um, to regroup. So I am trying to tell youth to try to maybe recreate that at home. Maybe you need to find a little space in your house where it's not where you're sitting down and doing your homework, but a place where you can go to just have a few minute break if that's outside going for a walk or if that's um, another place in your room or in your house where you could go and just have a change of environment and just find a couple of those coping strategies um, to take a little break and work through those emotions. Because I think we're all going through ups and downs right now being at home um, and it's challenging for all of us. So just knowing that we're all in this together and we're all going through this. Um, another activity I wanted to touch on that I heard of the other day was creating a hope kit. So finding a box and finding um, things in your life that you love to do or really appreciate. So it could be uh, maybe you like biking. So taking a picture of your bike and printing it off and putting that in your little box. Or maybe writing a quote on a piece of paper and putting that into your hope kit or your hope box. Um, it could be like maybe a picture of a friend that you have at your house and you could put that in there. It could be a pack of gum because maybe you really chew, like chewing gum. So just creating your own little hope kit or box and having that around um, in times where maybe things aren't going so well, but also using it too when things are going really well and just really being hopeful and focusing on hope and that we have goals and um, things that we are that we look forward to and things that we love currently in our life right now. So I encourage you if you um, want to create an activity is to create a hope kit or box. And there's actual virtual app too where you could go online if you don't want to actually get a box and put things into your box or kit. Um, so you could go online and you could actually use an app. I think it's called the virtual hope kit app. But if I have that wrong, please email me and I will send you the correct link. Or maybe in a minute I'll put it in the chat. Um, so just really drawing on those coping strategies and knowing that there's so many people here to support you and that there's so many great local resources up here in Northwestern Ontario. So I'm going to get Marissa to touch on some of the awesome resources that we have up here um, in Northwestern Ontario within our communities. Okay. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Cool beans. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to try to... Um, if I speak a little bit louder, is that better, Jace? Kind of. <laughs> um, Stephanie and I are social distancing on her deck, so I'm gonna not talk through my microphone, but talk through her computer. Um, so maybe just type in the chat if you can't hear me. Um, I'm gonna try and keep it simple today by um, just talking about a couple of resources that we have all across our region of Northwestern Ontario. Um, as you guys know, our school board covers a huge wide area um, that includes Red Lake, Sioux Lookout, Kenora, Dryden, Ignace, Upsala, tons of beautiful places and beautiful people. So um, I'm going to start by talking about Firefly. Oh no. Marissa, I think, logged out. So maybe she can come. Oh, she's back in. So she's going to keep chatting. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Rookie mistake. Let's try again. 
We'll see. Are you sharing your screen? I'm trying. We'll see how it goes. She might share screen. It may work. Nice. Yeah, it did. Okay. Perfect. So this is the lovely website of our friends at Firefly. Um, so I believe that Firefly offers services all across our region. Um, and they are an organization that supports the physical, emotional, developmental health of children and youth um, all the way up to 18. Um, one of their services, of course, is mental health services. They have lots of different things that they offer in terms of counseling and support and um, lots of amazing things that they do. So I'm going to show you here. And I'll add this in the chat later. Um, their intake line, which is right here. So this is something that you yourself could access or you could recommend it to um, somebody that you care about, maybe a friend or a sibling or a classmate. Um, ugh, sorry. I think if you're 12, 12 or older, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you are 12 or older, you can um, access it on your own. Uh, that means it could be private if you're not super comfortable with your family being a part of that. Um, but you are also, of course, more than welcome to have your family involved. You can give them a call, you can email them, you can check out the website um, and they will match you up with um, a counselor. The other thing that I wanted to show is our beautiful, beautiful friends at Kids Help Phone. So Kids Help Phone, of course, is free, it's confidential, it's available 24-7, 365, you can call them in the middle of the night, you can call them um, on a holiday, it doesn't matter when you call, um, there will be someone there. Sometimes there's a little bit of a waiting period, but uh, I always like to say that that just means you're not alone and needing support. Um, you can text them, which is a super cool option for people. This is how you do it, you text connect to 686868 or you can even connect here through the website. You can give them a call. The nice thing about this is it's toll free. So if your cell phone plan is limited or you actually don't even have a cell phone plan, if you're on an internet, you should be able to call them without, call and text them without um, minutes on your phone. The number is 1-800-668-6868. They also typically have a chat but I think due to high volume um, that's going on right now, it's currently closed, but of course you have the phone or text option. The other super cool thing about Kids Help Phone is that they've got lots of information in here about um, different things. So if you want some dating resources or you know whatever you're interested in learning more about, there's lots and lots of information online that you can read about, um, or of course you can call and text. And then I will also add into the chat um, a number that you can call or that you can give to somebody that you care about if they um, need immediate support. So they need to talk to somebody now, uh, maybe they're feeling overwhelmed or, or whatever they're feeling, um, and they can call that number 24-7-365. Yes, that is true, Sadia. Absolutely. That's a good one. Is that the resources on the... Sorry, I missed that comment. Yeah, no, uh, that's okay. I'll show you. Awesome. If it kicks me off again, I'm sorry. I'll be back. Marissa's going to present something else. Well, she's just loading that up. I want to touch on, too, that um, there's specific mental health resources for each of our areas. Um, so for Dryden, for example, or Kenora, or Sioux Lookout, or Ignis, or Red Lake, specific resources to each area because we also have unique counseling supports and agencies depending on where you are in Northwestern Ontario. So I encourage you to go onto the school board website and there is a tab with specific resources for each location. As well as if you are having a hard time like finding those resources, reach out to your school principal or a teacher and they would be able to connect you to the local resources as well. Still loading. Um, Marissa's just going to touch a little bit more on kids' help phone. Yeah, so this is something that Sadia had put in the chat. This is the resources around me. So um, I actually just turned my location on and was able to pull this right up. I could have also typed in my location. So as you can see here, like there's tons of resources available, um, almost more than I probably would have expected. 
in terms of counseling services, crisis support, helplines, treatment services, if you need support with bullying, um, healthcare, lots of different things. Um, I'm assuming this little friend is me hanging out here in Red Lake. <laughs> Let's say if I wanted to look in Ignace. <laughs> so no there's lots of like great resources within each community mm -hmm. and sometimes we think like there's limited resources because we're in northwestern ontario but i don't find that true i find that there's lots of amazing and great resources and so many people that want to be there to support you and help you so please don't be afraid to reach out mm -hmm. yeah so now you can probably see here like same sort of thing. And I don't actually really know Ignace very well. Um, I've driven through it a couple times, but that is about it. Sorry. Um, so see here, like there's lots of different resources available in Ignace as well. So that is, uh, Sadi is correct. That's a great resource to, um, to check out. Awesome. Thank you, Marissa. You're welcome. So there's so many great resources that we can use ourselves, but also um, help uh, connect friends or family members too as well. Um, so thank you for covering those resources and just know that there's so much support. And as I said, there's so many people that care and want to be there to help. So please reach out. And if, as I said, if you are nervous reaching out to one of these resources, please get in touch with either your school principal or a trusted teacher or a counselor, um, at one of our schools. And I know that they would help you. I just want to take this time to end off the presentation and then I think we will stop recording and then we'll open the floor to some questions the last few minutes. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you all for joining us tonight. It is awesome to see all of you guys on the chat and to start this conversation about what is Jack.org, what is mental health, how we can be there to support our own mental health, support one another, and really break the stigma around mental health. I love hearing um, youth ideas and creativity, and I would love to hear um, any ideas that you guys have at this time on how we can talk about mental health, how we can start having those conversations, and how we can truly be there for one another. So thank you, Jess, and thank you, Saudia, so much for taking the time out to be with us. It's been awesome getting to chat with you guys. And I think this was awesome having our first KPDSB Jack meetup. Um, and excited to see what the future holds. And I think we'll end um, right now. And I just want to say thank you and thank, thank you all of you for joining us. And we will end um, the recording now and then we'll open the floor to any questions that you guys may have. Thanks.